I've been very involved in the women's movement from the beginning, really. It sort of, if you like, changed my life. I went to the first women's, conf women's liberation conference in Oxford, and I remember cycling down St. Giles, which is one of the main streets in Oxford, thinking, well, you know, do I, do I, does this mean anything to me? I'm, I'm sort of liberated in a certain way. I feel, you know, I've got a lot of autonomy and control, and, um, you know, I was always encouraged by my family, even my father, or maybe particularly my father, to, to follow women role models. So I, I, I wasn't sure it was for me. But, you know, I, I listened and there was all sorts of papers ranging from, you know, the politics of housework to the problems of the female orgasm. And I thought, hmm, yeah, no, this is interesting. <laughs> you know, I might be a housewife, you know, but I don't want to. I be. was always involved in a way which was both personal but also quite political. So reaching out to working class women factories around Oxford and working with them on fighting for nurseries. But at the same time, feeling it was a personal question as well. Obviously within feminism there are a lot of different sort of currents or, st or, or, or opinions and um, there were many women who thought of feminism in terms of equal opportunities but I remember a really good cartoon, I can't remember the actual image but the slogan was equality, hey we want something better than that. So I always thought of feminism as being about liberation and about a different way of, a different kind of social human relationship, a different way of being human. Society as it is encourages people to follow role models, follow um, a career, follow a sort of a role, a destiny in society that they haven't had much control over. And in a way feminism kind of gave you the strength because it was a, very much about also relationships with other women so you had a kind of support in a way emotionally to stand back a bit from what might be your sort of role in society your future role and make it made you you more conscious of what could be your role I think it makes us more radical about our aspirations you know this notion of equality we've got something better in mind is saying actually we don't want to be doing the same jobs that men do uh, we don't want to be kind of running companies you know we want to be creating a different kind of society in which you know that there, there, there isn't this sort of exclusion there isn't the dictatorship of the production line you know there is a real kind of um, you know realization of people's creativity for the benefit of society for the benefit of each other I think the women's movement particularly through these consciousness raising groups was valuing what we could call tacit you know knowledge knowledge that's we can't necessarily write a long paper but it but it's there in our practice or in our emotions you know a lot of consciousness raising groups was drawing out of our feelings you know um, ideas and sharing those feelings that led to ideas about organizing healthcare differently, um, centers for battered women, you know, so policy ideas that had their roots, not in sort of, you know, very grand theories or even surveys, but in people's feelings and, and, and sort of intuitions about what could be different and what should be different. And I think that's not just applicable to women. I think, you know, everybody has that creativity. I think feminism has also changed my understanding of power. So traditionally the left has always looked for power, um, the power of domination, the power to win government and then change society as it were from above. And I think what feminism showed me is the power, the power to create, the power of transformative capacity. Take childcare, you know, we we couldn't wait, we could have, we did have in our set of demands, I mean, we did have demands, and one of them was 24-hour nurseries, but we couldn't wait. So they then actually set about creating really good kinds of childcare together. And that was a kind of, in a way, it was a refusal of existing social relations, which has its own power, and then going on to create alternatives to transform society here and now. And we see the same emphasis in 
the new movements that were visible in 2011 in the squares, in Tahrir, in, in, um, in, in Madrid, in Catalonia, in, in London, in, in US Occupy, you know, where people created there and then. I would like to see a, a bit more of an interrogation of Hillary Clinton's feminism. You know, she claims very much to be the representative of women, but actually, you know, she's only representing one way of being a feminist, which is very much the sort of um, leaning in, you know, trying to break the glass ceiling. Um, and I think, you know, there is another kind of feminism which is trying to change society. And I'd, I'd want Bernie Sa the recovery of Bernie Sanders and his own campaign to be a bit more, um, again, a bit more kind of modest and and have an, an understanding about sharing power in an understanding socialism so again you know fighting confronting the banks and wall street is very important but socialism is going to be about more than simply public control over the banks it requires you know that again that creative energy that's the basis of democracy and workers control and what i've started calling productive democracy you know kind of democratic economy which you know there are already many you know moves towards because after all you know socialism in the past has not really met people's needs particularly their sort of creativity their creative needs their needs as full human beings feminism gives a a, a richer vision of that fulfillment you know and really enables people to see how or could enable people to see how socialism isn't just about the collective, as it were, above or dominating the individual, but it's like through the social, we're individually realized. And I think that has been the lesson of feminism.